I'm Dave Carpenter with Riverwood Flies. Uh, we're going to tie a mallard and um, elk pattern today. It's a, it's a pattern that imitates a drowned caddis fly or a drowned adult stonefly or a drowned grasshopper. Uh, it's very effective in the summertime. Uh, you can fish it as a dry fly or as a subsurface fly. Generally what I do is I cast this out let it float for as long as it wants to float. If it starts sinking, I don't worry about it. Just let it continue to drift. As it sinks, uh, that's when a fish will usually pick up on it. Um, the materials we're going to use are an extended um, dry fly hook, also called a hopper hook. Uh, we'll have a body of spun elk hair. We'll have a mallard flank wing and a peacock curl head. So let's get started. We start our thread base on this fly back towards the, the uh, hook point because we're going to be spinning this elk hair and so it's best to have a, a smooth surface to, to spin the hair on. Take a small clump of hair. Pull out some of the guard hairs and the under underbody hair. This one looks pretty ragged anyway, so it's it's not real critical that we we get perfectly clean hair. We'll lay this first batch down. After every wrap, pull tight, and that will cause the hair to flare out. Fold back the hair, lay down a back base for our next clump of hair. that right next to the first clump of hair. You can see as that spins, it'll flare out, run the thread up through it. And we'll do that one more time and then we'll trim it all up. It's kind of a combination of a stacked or spun hair. True true spun hair flies, um, you, you really want to take three loose wraps and then pull tight and that'll cause it to flare out and it's, it's more uniform. But since we'll be trimming this up, we don't need it stacked near as tight. Um, we'll just kind of lay it in there and do just a couple turns on it. real similar to how you would tie a goddard caddis, um, but on the goddard caddis you shape the body a little bit differently. That's one of my favorite flies. Uh, it uses antelope hair for the, uh, the body. Simply take the fly in hand with our scissors. We do give it a little haircut here. We trim it all down until the fly is about the diameter of a pencil. Like I said, we want this fly to be pretty ragged looking, so you don't have to get out the razor blade and get too serious with it. Leave a few hairs down below to look like legs. Put a 
back in the vise and we'll put a wing on it. Again, for the wing, we're using a mallard flank. This one's dyed kind of a brownish color. So we'll lay that right on top. A couple loose wraps because we're going to want to pull this feather. And we want it to just barely extend past the body of the fly. The last step, we're going to use some peacock curl. And that just gives the uh, a little bit of attractiveness to the fly. Um, the peacock curl um, is uh, iridescent, multiple colors, blues, greens, blacks, and very shiny, so it's usually something that will catch a fish's eye. If you want to fish this more as a dry fly, you could put a dry fly hackle up here on the head, over wrapped over the top of the peacock. But this one we'll just do There you have the elk and mallard. Let's go fish it. Hi, I'm Dave Carpenter with Riverwood Flies and Oregon Outdoor Excursions. We're here on the North San Ian River, just a little bit uh, east of the town of Lyons. The, the fly we're going to fish today is a uh, pattern I call the elk and mallard. It's got a body of spun elk hair, a peacock curl head, a little bit of mallard wing or mallard flank for a wing. And this is a fly that is pretty versatile. You can fish it as a dry if you want to treat it with some floating. You can, you can do so and it'll float fairly well. But I like to fish it subsurface because I think it, it imitates a uh, dead adult caddis best of all. It's a fly I'll often use as a dropper. Uh, I'll either run it off of a heavy, heavily weighted nymph and it'll float above that nymph. Or in, in this case, we're tied up to do a heavy uh, or, a, or a big uh, dry fly up top with uh, the elk and mallard trailing off of it a couple of feet. What we can do is both flies will float for a while. Uh, go ahead and let the elk and mallard sink and then we'll use the big dry fly kind of like an indicator. If we see some movement on it that isn't quite natural, then we know something's bumping the fly underneath. The rod I'm using today is a nine foot fly, or a nine foot five weight uh, Orvis Helios. It's a tip flex rod. It's pretty versatile. It's, a, it's about the size you'd want to use for trout fishing here on the Sandy Am. There are some very big fish, but it's sensitive sensitive enough for, for smaller fish. And the way we'll, we'll, we'll throw this fly is we'll do pretty much a, a, a short upstream cast We we'll try to keep it uh, mended so that, uh, that that fly is going on a dead drift. Again, once that dropper fly sinks, we want to keep our eye on the, the, the big dry fly on top to see if it does anything strange. Oh, there was a fish just went after the dry fly on top.
take us fly around some of these rocks here and see if what we can find. There we go. Oh, I missed him. This time of year on the San Am, uh, dry fly fishing is kind of tough. You'll catch a lot of fish, but most of them will be steelhead smolts, young steelhead that have been released into the river. Uh, they'll hang around in the river here for most of the summer before they start heading out to the ocean. Some of them will stay in the river actually um, more than a year. They'll, they'll overwinter here before they go out. The problem that creates is that they're very aggressive little fish, and they'll hit just about everything you throw on the, out to them. Uh, so it's tough to get into a real big fish because the smolts are so aggressive that they just they take everything before the big fish have a chance to hit it. That's why it's a, a common practice, and what I like to do is to run two flies, especially in this configuration, the one is on the surface and one is subsurface. That way, uh, the smolts will mess with the fly up on top, and give a larger fish a shot at, at what's trailing behind it. Also with this fly, don't be afraid to let it dangle in the current. Um, as it sinks and comes to the end of the, the drift or of the swing, uh, that fly will raise back up and it'll look like an emerging uh, caddis coming from the bottom to the surface to transform into an adult. So a lot of times they'll take it when it's swinging and as it's rising up off the bottom. this fly one more cast before we give up on it. That's how you fish the elk and mallard.